Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. We have a picture of the pursuit. Sammy, hurry this up. He's going to kill somebody. We got him. We got him. They're down in the ditch. Just cut him up. Go away. Look around. He's wrecked. He's wrecked. No matter where you are, at any second, oh, oh. it could happen to you. Oh, man. You need some help. Because desperate criminals. Oh, God, God. Use desperate measures. No matter who gets in the way. For the next 60 minutes, you'll get a close up view of what officers see every day. You'll ride shotgun in the most terrifying chases on the road. You'll feel the heat of the most explosive acts of criminal insanity ever captured on tape. Much of this footage has never been viewed by the public. Police and news agencies send us their most shocking videos. He's got a gun, he's got a gun. So that you can know what they know. That to let your guard down, even for an instant, Get in an could mean disaster. He's gonna run the red light, he's gonna run it. So crank up your TV and don't turn away because real life happens in the blink of an eye. Shut your truck off. I'm Sheriff John Bunnell. Today's newspapers are full of stories about crime and crime statistics, but numbers don't tell the whole story. And believe me, when crime strikes close to you, statistics don't matter at all. The only thing then that matters is knowing what to do. That's why we bring you police videos in order for you to see for yourself how criminals work and the tricks they pull. So you won't be a statistic too. Warren, Michigan. Police respond to a report of three brutal muggers preying on shoppers at this mall. And they arrive just as the trio is fleeing the scene. These hoodlums are wanted for robbing and beating a dozen elderly women. They're used to having superior numbers and strength over their victims. Now the tables have turned. Reinforcements rush in to back up the officers. No warning. Warning with it. Overwhelmed by the swarm of cruisers, the renegades desperately dodge into opposing lanes. No worry, I got three of them ahead of me. This officer almost takes a head-on hit, but then reverses direction and joins the pursuit. The first thing police try to do is slow these guys down. Box them in. Unfortunately, the thugs are soon shielded by a bizarre line of stopped traffic. One cruiser zips past a wall of stationary cars to head off the bad guys on the other side. But the suspects aren't stopping. The officer jerks to the right at the last second. It's clear these strong arm robbers aren't afraid to terrorize anyone in their path. But now they're not messing with little old ladies. Cops aren't intimidated by these sadistic suspects. As the crooks fly under the freeway, Officer Ken Marcy joins the chase. He coordinates with other units to tighten their grip on the speeding car. Down a bit. But again, the criminals manage to slip through their fingers. They find a hole in the cop's corral and blow right through it. Marcy matches their tenacity, buzzing his cruiser in front of the car like a high-octane hornet. The driver tries to swat him away, clipping the police car. When they lash out this time, they're the ones who get hurt. The impact leaves the driver with a crumpled hood and an airbag in his face. But limited vision doesn't slow him down. Marcy cuts the car off from the left, giving the semi-blind suspect no place to go except the shoulder. But even that turns ugly. The driver tears up an embankment and swings back onto the freeway, just missing a sports car parked on the side. Officer Marcy is stunned to see the car cut back in front of him. 
he immediately jumps into the dogfight again. This time, the police execute a textbook rolling roadblock. But before they can seal the deal, the muggers get pushy and slam the police car. They wallop Marcy's cruiser from behind, sending it spinning 360 degrees. But Marcy never takes a break. He's not gonna let these cold-hearted criminals get away. Where'd he go? He go that way? Marcy races to rejoin the chase. But now, other units are there to pick up where he left off. The collision moments ago popped the suspect's hood, and now he's driving blind. The hood is straight up on the car. But even that won't stop him. So another cruiser zeroes in on the suspect's rear quarter panel. A precise hit. The vehicle carves a wide, smoking arc across the freeway. Marcy and his colleagues swarm over the crooks. These goons won't be mugging any more grandmothers. They have custody. Bullies may be used to preying on those weaker than them. But today, these thugs finally picked on someone their own size. And though they were desperate enough to tangle with the boys in blue, these punks quickly learned that if they mess with one officer, They mess with them all. Columbus, Ohio. In the dark of night, a car thief races like a demon against freeway traffic. Officers pursue on the other side of the highway. The man has ignored every warning and doesn't seem to care whether he lives or dies. Police are determined to stop him. They coordinate with units ahead to set up a roadblock for the outlaw. Local officers quickly comply. They divert civilian drivers and get the trap ready to spring. The suspect sees the officers waiting, but it doesn't phase him. In a purely suicidal act, he slams his foot on the gas even harder. The suspect ran the roadblock doing close to 90. There was no way he could hold the road. The SUV flipped eight times, and the steel-bodied vehicle crumbled like a tin can. Police rushed to the mangled wreck, only to find that the suspect was thrown clear. Incredibly, he's still alive. Police find him in critical condition and rush him to the hospital. At some indefinable moment, and for reasons unknown, this criminal's desire to steal became a death wish. Thankfully, despite his insane attempt, that wish wasn't granted. Managua, Nicaragua. For days, students have been demonstrating in support of government funding for public universities. The protesters vastly outnumber the police. One radical agitator could turn this peaceful rally into chaos. Somewhere in the sea of people, 26-year-old Ephraim Castillo has arrived with a backpack full of homemade mortars. Castillo intends to shoot his mortars at police, but his plan is about to go awry. As the bomber casually strolls through the crowd, a faulty fuse triggers a premature blast. 
The explosions cause terrified demonstrators to scatter. When the smoke clears, it's apparent that Castillo himself is the only one severely injured. When the explosions stop, concerned spectators rush to the bomber's aid. They douse his singed flesh with water to soothe his third-degree burns. Knowing he needs immediate medical attention, the demonstrators lift the suffering man off the ground. As his students carry Castillo to the street, police race to clear a path for an ambulance's arrival. Demonstrators and police work together to save a man who was a victim of his own terrorism. This young man had anarchy in mind when he brought bombs to a peaceful protest. But a mishap of his own making put a stop to this intended act of terrorism. Still to come, on police video, small time crooks cause big time trouble. A minor traffic offender creates a major power outage. And a misdemeanor shoplifter resorts to felony aggravated assault. These guys take petty crimes to a whole new level. A huge shower of sparks. Next. A typical police officer's day can go from eight hours of calm to eight minutes of terror. And it can happen without any warning. Plainfield, Indiana. Officer Scott Spillman is near the end of his evening patrol when he spots a car with a broken tail light. The driver sees the officer's lights behind him and eases to a stop. Green Dodge Daytona, by flight information. But suddenly, he revs his car through the parking lot. He's running from me. Spillman soon realizes the driver wasn't pulling over to talk to the police. He was looking for a convenient place to drop off his passenger. Charlie just dumped a female out. Whatever he's planning, the guy clearly doesn't want the woman to be part of it. Spillman is alarmed by the man's odd behavior. The erratic driver seems to be preparing for the worst. It just ran the stop sign. The officer quickly calls for backup. One male occupant with a blue hat on, mustache. But the lunatic driver spots the approaching squad car and aims straight for it. Going after the police car. The cruiser fears at the last second, but the suicidal man's next target can't move out of the way. The suspect intentionally slams into a power pole. Power lines tangle across the road as the transformer explodes in a monstrous green flash. Another unit heading to the scene witnesses the emerald burst of electricity from 300 yards away. Seeing the driver is out of the car and virtually unharmed, Spillman braves the danger of 20,000 volts to take him into custody. Officer Spillman never could have guessed when he turned on his lights. He's running from me. The kind of insanity he'd be getting into. But he can tell you that a suspect intent on self-destruction can turn a minor violation into a precarious pursuit. And a quiet evening into a complete nightmare. Centerville, Georgia. A customer browses in a local department store. But he's not looking to buy anything. He's looking to steal something. This man is a shoplifter whose method is well known throughout the mall. He delivers a blast of pepper spray to anyone who gets between him and his getaway. Store managers spot him pulling the mace from his pocket. They know he's up to his old tricks and quickly call police. But this guy is fearless. His technique has worked so many times, he thinks he can steal anything, even a bulky air conditioner. This five-finger discount is going to require two hands. It's a score so conspicuous, 
most shoplifters would never attempt it. Knowing the bandit's mace and race strategy, store security leaves it to the police to make the arrest. The shoplifter heads for the parking lot, where his accomplice is waiting. But the getaway vehicle is easy for officers to spot. The evidence is right on the roof. The policeman quickly box the criminals in. The driver gives up, but the shoplifter himself isn't ready to surrender. Get out of the car! Unfortunately, these officers are unfamiliar with his M.O. Blinded by the mace, the cop does his best to chase the fugitive. But he needs a moment to clear his vision, so his partner takes over the foot pursuit. Once backup arrives to handle the accomplice, the maced officer gets back in the action. Across the street, a helpful onlooker points him toward the suspect. But the crook is already in custody. The officer's partner is caught and cuffed him in the parking lot. This robber's plan had worked so many times, he kept raising the stakes. But his overconfidence finally prompted him to go too far. He thought macing a police officer would cinch his escape. But he was only adding aggravated assault to his rap sheet. And now he'll be doing five years in the cooler. Just ahead on police videos. Picking up speed. Complex criminal conspiracies. From tag team burglars to hit men for hire. You do it off me. I'll kill you. Even when the plot seems outrageous. Somebody, if they clone, will take my dog. The danger is all too real. It could be disastrous. It's a whole new look. An organized crime. Next. One of the most dangerous things you're going to face as a police officer is a high-speed pursuit. So the moment it starts, you want to be looking for the fastest and the safest way to end it. Port Wentworth, Georgia. Sergeant Matthew Libby has just clocked this driver doing 17 miles per hour over the limit. Libby follows the car. Of course, now the man is a model driver carefully obeying the rules of the road. Now we're right uh, at the off-ramp. But when the officer turns on his lights, instead of taking a ticket, the suspect panics and takes off. The sudden change of heart tells the sergeant that this driver has something more to hide than a lead foot. Whatever it is, he kicks it up to 70 miles per hour in a 45 zone. The sergeant has seen enough. And if needed, he's ready to stop the suspect by force. The moment the fugitive hits a strip of open highway, Sergeant Libby makes his move. He performs a high-speed pit with expert precision, causing the fugitive to spin out onto the center divide. The sergeant skids and swings back around, only to find the chase isn't over. A backup unit rushes in to assist the sergeant. The suspect's determination only earns him an extra 30 yards before the backup cruiser shuts him down for good. With the fugitive stopped at the side of the road, Sergeant Libby gets to unmask the real reason for this crook's flight. Don't you had a drink? You smell like a brewery. A search of the car reveals four beer cans, all empty. The sergeant's hunch that this guy had something to hide was right on the money. But there was even more to it than he thought. When Libby took the suspect back to the station to sober up, you running, buddy? he discovered that the suspect had stolen the car before taking off on his drunken joyride. You're under arrest. Various charges. When marriages are in trouble, tempers can flare. And sometimes that anger can lead people to have sinister thoughts, like murder. Phoenix, Arizona. Tonight, an ominous meeting is taking place at this street-side cafe. My the man in the white shirt is Jan Solomon. He's looking for someone to murder his mistress's husband. The man on the right is the hitman he's found for the job. But little does Solomon know, this hitman is actually an undercover detective. 
Jack Ballantyne. I played the role of a mafia hitman out of um, upstate New York. Solomon gives the undercover officer every detail. This is the most love story you've ever heard of. The problem is, his sweetheart is already married to someone else. She believes if she gets a divorce, the husband will kill both him and her because he would be so jealous. Solomon informs him that the husband is an avid bicyclist. Playing the hitman role to the hilt, Ballantyne hatches a gruesome plan. So what we agreed upon was that I was going to wait till he was riding his bike some evening. I was going to run him over. Now the officer needs to find out if Solomon is truly willing to put up the blood money. I usually don't pay less than $25,000. Payment agreed upon. Valentine tries to scare the man into reconsidering. Valentine sets up one more meeting, a week later at the same locale. Nice to see you. The undercover officer soon realizes that Solomon is as gung-ho as ever. Is she going to be OK about it all? She's got it all. She sat down and explained it to her as far as the way to act. Valentine is now completely convinced that Solomon is willing to see this through. The undercover officer excuses himself to the bathroom, leaving Solomon under the watchful eye of the surveillance unit. Our tactical team came over to him, let him know who they were, asked him to stand up. He very calmly stood up. They directed him to the vehicle, and, and he went in the police car, and that was it. Jan Solomon had many chances to back out of his murderous plot. Now he'll be pondering how he could have handled everything better in the cold confines of a prison cell. Wycliffe, Ohio. Officer Brian Lako responds to a report of a motorcycle clocked at 120 miles per hour and heading his way. Affirmative, come towards us now. The biker flies past, ignoring the officer's lights and sirens. Lako tries to keep up. But on the freeway, this two-wheel fugitive is simply too fast. In no time, Lako loses sight of the cyclist. But he quickly gets word of the suspect's location. Leaving the freeway, the motorcyclist has made a big mistake. Because this out-of-town outlaw doesn't know the local streets like Lako does. Soon, the officer catches up to the suspect. Just in time to see him narrowly avoid a collision. He has another close call at the next intersection. A speeding sedan misses his motorcycle by inches. The cyclist races down a dark street. He's blocked in, and Lako won't let him go. But the biker refuses to stop, no matter what gets in his way. The vehicles collide, knocking the biker over the hood of the car. Lako quickly rushes to the biker's aid, but the suspect is okay. The only thing damaged in the crash was the motorcycle. Considering the dangerous moves this motorcyclist made, he's lucky that the worst thing that happened was his run-in with the police. Up next, on police videos, the most slippery suspects cops have ever seen. When police tighten their grip, these guys squeeze through their fingers. They're only one slick move from a smooth getaway. Next. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. If a suspect is in the middle of a pursuit, the last thing they're concerned about is people on bicycles, people on the sidewalk. They have tunnel vision where their only concern is getting away from the police at any cost. Melbourne, Australia. Police have been tracking a pair of burglars for weeks. The crooks don't know that the officers have located their hideout. 
As the burglars head home in their white SUV, they suddenly notice the black police unit on their tail. They double back, trying to elude the officer. As they round the corner, another police unit races in to take up the slack. The bandit's tires spin double time as the wheelman drops the pedal. But this is rush hour. They race toward an intersection where all lanes are blocked. The suspects think fast. They squeeze between a building and a telephone pole, but their haste nearly sparks disaster. If they had pulled into the intersection a split second earlier, this chase would have ended in a vicious crunch of metal. But the frenzied crook's eagerness to avoid capture has given them a severe case of tunnel vision. They're in such a hurry, they barely see a bicyclist crossing the street, and a pedestrian is lucky to stay in the clear. As rush hour traffic intensifies, it becomes increasingly difficult to find a clear path. A car blocks the way. The driver swerves to avoid it, a move that almost proves lethal. It's only a quick slam on the brake pedal that kept this getaway from turning into manslaughter. With foot and motor traffic everywhere, the crooks decide they can't get out of town. They head to the only refuge they know, home. The suspects hurry toward their hideout, not knowing that officers are already there waiting for them. The bandits separate quickly, but it only takes police a couple of minutes to track them down. At the tender age of 20, these suspects are now on their way to jail. They didn't realize when they hit the road running how little road there would be to hit. And instead of forging their path to freedom, this road led them right back to where they started, going nowhere fast. The one in custody on the second floor of the flight. One of the toughest things that you're going to face as a police officer is how to deal with people who are emotionally disturbed. Um, oftentimes, they can be taken into custody if they're a danger to themselves or others, but it's a fine line because paranoia in itself is not a felony. West Melbourne, Florida. An officer has pulled this woman over for flashing her high beams at other motorists. He intends to give her a warning, but instead, she ends up giving him one. We're all at great risk. You are going to eventually get rid She claims she's being chased by religious fanatics. Nobody in America can stop this criminal call. They want me dead. The officer listens patiently, but the woman has a vast conspiracy theory. And what they'll do is they're going to murder me, and then I, I fly a tenant, and then somebody that they club will take my job. Nobody will ever know I died. Just somebody else will go right in there, and then they'll have another plan. How do I know I'm not talking to the clone now? Well, I don't know. He tries to help the woman find a hotel where she can rest for the night. But even that provokes suspicion. So the best hotel I found so far was the Holiday Inn, but I think the desk clerk is in it, which is bothersome. And then he said, oh, I'll call 911 when you need it. And I said, oh, boy, never mind. I'm leaving. OK. Clearly, the woman is resistant to any help. You know, they actually killed somebody in a room next to me. And I think that it was supposed to be me, and they killed the wrong person. Uh oh. She may have some wild theories, but she's clearly not a danger. All the officer is able to do is issue her a warning. Do me a favor, don't drive down the road flash your hydrant, because you're going to keep getting stopped. Okay, thank you. All right. One hour later, the same cop spots a speeding vehicle and attempts to pull it over. I got somebody down on 192 doing about 80. To his dismay, it's the same driver. I got her. Oh, no. Is it hurt? He has the woman pull into a parking lot where he confronts her with her infraction. I paced you 88 miles an hour. There was nobody behind you. Hoping to calm her down, he offers to get her some help. The woman doesn't appear to be in any real danger, and since she refuses the officer's assistance, there's little he can do. Well, 
Ma'am, I'm, I'm, I'm not on your side when you're going 88 miles an hour. The officer writes her a speeding ticket. Citation for 88 miles an hour in a 45 mile an hour speed zone. And you're trying to bottom back. Would you please say that? What would you like me to say? That I was being chased. That I had said that I was being chased. The only person, the only person that somebody chasing was you gonna was me. me. The woman heads for a hotel to turn in for the night. The police couldn't convince her to get help, but at least she'll be getting some much needed rest. Officers never know what they'll have to deal with when they pull someone over. There are some situations a cop on the beat just isn't able to handle. They've got all kinds of powders that they put on you that make you slow, that make you think, that make you sleepy. But if he can't save the world from diabolical conspiracies, at least he can keep the streets safe from reckless drivers. Do me a favor, don't drive down the road flashing your highway, because you're going to keep getting stopped. Okay, thank you. All right. Swanee County, Florida, weaving dangerously from lane to lane, this drunken driver races ahead of six cruisers bearing down on him at 90 miles an hour. Deputy Tim McDaniel zooms ahead to set up stop sticks. We got six units now. Uh, okay, get him stop. Let's get the road spike up here. The suspect flies past, oblivious to McDaniel's efforts to stop him. The suspect's tires tear to ribbons, and the officers catch up quickly. Stand by, we've got one tire going flat. With the road ahead clear, an officer closes in and slams the suspect's vehicle. Grinding the old Plymouth sedan into the guardrail. He can push him off the side of the road. But the drunken driver isn't about to quit. He braces the wheel and rides it out. And he slips out of the officer's grasp. Another officer sees his chance and moves in for the pit. The suspect fishtails across the freeway, grinding to a halt in a drainage ditch. The officers swarm in on the suspect, who even now won't give up. He grips the steering wheel like a stubborn child, refusing to budge until nine officers physically tear him away. This habitual inebriate already had several DUI suspensions. So these officers had good reason to take him off the road by force. But even after they finally pinned him down and brought him to a stop, he continued to fight, too drunk to realize the uselessness of the struggle. Coming up on Police Videos. Oh, what's that car? Bad guys take home field advantage. I'm not sure from a battle in the back hills to a slugfest in the desert. The crooks know these mean streets all too well. This truck is not stopping. And out here, they play by their own rules. We just try to take out that cruiser. Next. When officers spot a drunk driver, they have only one goal take him off the road before he takes himself off the road. La Follette, Tennessee. In the deep south, police sometimes have problems with good old boys who've had too many beers. So when this DUI suspect refuses to stop, officers figure he might be a handful. This truck is not stopping, it's picking up speed. The suspect heads for the hills. The officers fear he'll use his four-wheeler to hack cross-country, where their cruisers won't be able to follow. Before he can even think about trying it, they move in to cut him off. But the drunken lummox swerves wildly, slamming into the cruiser before it can pass. Suddenly, the suspect sees a way out. He hits the gas and heads into the backwoods. As the suspect piles on more speed, the officers struggle to give dispatch their new location. Uh, 
The boozed up redneck hits the next corner at over 50, but his truck can't handle the stunt. He just flopped out, he just flopped out. The black scar on the pavement is a testament to his drunken judgment. The truck rolls over on its side and the suspect has reached the end of his run. Even the local wildlife is fortunate to escape his liquor's sodden blunder. The crash sends a black bear scampering for a quieter neck of the woods. The officers rush to the vehicle. The suspect has survived the impact. Suffering only a few bruises, a bloody nose, and some handcuffs. Officers thought this old boy might be tanked up on alcohol. This truck is not stopping. And the evidence proves them correct. They found his vehicle littered with empty beer cans and his license already revoked for DUI. The suspect may have had a powerful vehicle and backwoods savvy on his side, but in his drunken condition, he never really had any advantage at all. El Monte, California. Officers notice a sedan with a broken window, a clue that the three men inside may have stolen it. This chase has been going on now for some time. A plate check confirms. They've got a hot Chevy on their hands. Going about 35 miles an hour right now, and there's, uh, let's see, four units behind him now. But police aren't aware that the driver is a convict on parole. He knows what prison is really like and he'll do whatever it takes to keep from going back. Oh, a very close call with that red car at the intersection. He just missed him by inches. As the wailing sirens warn cars ahead, a motorist pulls over, right into the path of the stolen auto. Oh, he put that car up on the sidewalk, scour of sparks. The driver swiped the rear bumper and destroyed his front tire by hopping the curb. But that doesn't stop him from steering his mangled machine into oncoming lanes. It, there is damage to that right front tire. Police quickly organize a strategy to contain the thieves. They place cruisers at all major intersections. Police are doing a very good job keeping the traffic away from this guy. The driver shoots blindly through cross streets, adding more bone-jarring jolts to the undercarriage. Now the suspect hitting bumps. We don't know how much more abuse that car can take. But it's too much stress. The tire shears off the front rim, and hot steel gouges into the blacktop. There you see that right front tire, and it is completely gone. Like a four-door meteor shower, the car leaves a mass of embers in its wake. Oh, look at that, a huge shower of sparks coming from the right side. He's just grinding into the pavement. The white hot shards of grated metal threaten to burn through the rear tire as well. And if the sparks get to the gas tank, it's all over. That many sparks that close to the engine could be disastrous. The parolee tries to stay mobile, but the stolen car can't hold up any longer. The smoking heap of scrap metal utters a death rattle and sputters to a stop. There's a lot of smoke, a lot of smoke. He's definitely stopped. Officers quickly surround the car. Police are approaching cautiously. There must be eight or ten units behind him. They take aim with their weapons, and the suspects are in the sights of a dozen semi-automatics. Okay, now he's getting out. Hands up, the driver getting out. Reality quickly sets in, and the felon and his friends are soon in custody. Another person getting out of the car. This car was just loaded. After a stint in prison, Oh, he put that car. The driver knew he didn't want to go back, so he ran. Oh, a very close call with that red car. But he couldn't figure out the trick to staying out of jail. We don't know how much more abuse that car can take. You never have to worry about running if you don't commit the crime in the first place. Still the cop on police videos. Oh, he gets awfully close to that cruiser. A pack of teens hits the open highway. He is all over the road. When the crooks have room to run, the cops have no room for mistakes. If you have amazing footage of police action or crimes in progress, call me, John Bunnell, at Police Videos at the number below, 800-611-9944.
That's 800-611-9944. A high-speed pursuit on the open road puts a police officer's driving skills to the ultimate test. One wrong move could mean disaster. Payson, Arizona. This fugitive is sprinting along the hot desert highway and is miles away from the nearest town. Officers have been in this pursuit now for well over half an hour. Police are baffled as to why this suspect is running. He's only wanted for a minor traffic violation. But there are five people in the car. If you look closely, you can see that it's a packed car down there. And whether or not the passengers like it, they're all along for the ride. The suspect deliberately swerves into the path of gaining cruisers. He is all over the road. Looks like he's doing everything he can to keep police from passing. With nothing ahead but open highway, the driver thinks he has the edge on police but the officers are on the lookout for their own golden opportunity. Well, we're 20 miles into the desert now, and there really isn't a heck of a lot of traffic. The suspect has a guardrail to the left and a solid wall of rock to the right. It's the perfect place for a barricade. There are several units ahead blocking that lane. And he, whoa, he gets awfully close to that cruiser. Two officers scramble for cover as the outlaw takes aim and shoots past the stop sticks. The success of his slick move makes this fugitive feel invincible. But police are intent on stopping this guy using every available means. Police have been given the go ahead to stop this suspect by force. Sergeant Dennis Isaacson overtakes the suspect. With a full car, the suspect can't accelerate fast enough, and Isaacson pulls in front of him. The patrol car is positioning himself just in front of the viewer. Just as the fugitive tries to pass, the sergeant turns his cruiser into a rolling wedge of steel. Wow, there you can see this officer pulling up a very difficult move at these speeds. The machines finally grind to a halt. Moments later, the driver and his passengers are laid out on the same scorching blacktop. Looks like it's all over. That was supposed to be their ticket out of town. This fugitive thought he had it all figured out. Officers have been in this pursuit now for well over half an hour. But police were the ones with the real advantage. There really isn't a heck of a lot of crap. Because this driver wasn't exactly an experienced crook but only a teenage kid. He stole the car and used it as a lethal weapon. Whoa, he hit awfully close to that cruiser. But he learned quickly that he couldn't outdrive Arizona's finest, and that his road to freedom was just a road to nowhere. Looks like it's all over. Police don't always know why suspects choose to break the law. They may be out for thrills. Or they may be out for blood. They may have made a mistake. Or they may know exactly what they're doing. But whatever their reasons, they will be dead. Police only know one thing. They've broken the law. We got him. And must answer for their crimes.